Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. Today we're poke pulling for eels. <laughs> So we're using the same setup um, that you know 50 cent poke pole we showed you guys how to make. Um, really, really simple. Bait it with some squid, poke it down deep in those holes in the, in the jetties or in the rocks, wherever. When you feel a bite, just pull it on out. There's definitely something down there. Just stole my bait, so we'll see if there's see if he's still hungry. Looking for a good spot to poke pull. I like deep holes like this. It just keeps going and going and going. Deep down in there. Places you can kind of feel around. What I'll do is I'll let it sit for a little bit. And if after a minute or so I don't feel a tug, then I'll move it just slightly to another spot in the same hole. Oh yeah, that was a bite. That was a solid bite. Out fishing me, once again, catching the baby cabazon. Beautiful fish. Should we toss him back? Yeah. I really like the tentacle part of the uh, squid for bait. I feel like it just, I don't know, it's a little more enticing for them to bite. Yeah. It's a nice one. Look at the size of that guy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oof. We've been here for a total of 15 minutes. Holy crap, that's a huge one. And then I'm also cutting his gills out just to ensure. These guys are really tough to kill. And I don't like anything suffering need needlessly. So I'm just going to make sure double time that he's dead. And then uh, once the nerves stop moving, we'll talk about him a little bit. Ow. His teeth are sharp. There it is. I even got to keep the bait. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. All right. So his nerves are still moving, which means without the kung fu death grip I got on him right now, he could still squirm out and get away, even though he's not going to be alive. I don't want to lose him. I'm going to put him in here, and then I'm going to put him in my bucket. Really should be using a net for these guys. They're very, very slippery. You can easily get away from you. <laughs> As you can see, I can't even get a hold of him. There we go. All right, I'm gonna tie him up. That way, if he has a couple more kicks from his nerves, he won't be able to get out of the bucket. What you got there, baby? Nice. Okay, I'm gonna put it back. Alright. It's really nice. It's like crystal clear water today, so you can actually see the fish when they're hitting. That was a fish. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, that's a nice eel, baby. Oh yeah, that's bigger than the one I caught. Yeah. That's like uh 24 inches probably. That's really nice. Damn. Good job, babe. I thought it was a crab. Showing me up. Look at that. All right, let's dispatch him. We've had a, a ton of bites today and we've uh, already caught two eels. See Diane standing right here, way underneath these rocks. Sometimes you'll find there's like three or four grass rockfish, a couple black and yellows, and a couple eels just all hanging out. The cool thing about uh, poke pulling is you get to access all of these little holes that nobody can access with a hook and line. So even though this setup costs 50 cents, right, you can get it way back up in these cracks, like under these overhangs and whatnot, 
and you can't cast to those. So you could have a $200 rod and no joke, we'll be out here out fishing these people with a $200 rod and we're using a 50 cent poke pole. So it's pretty fun. All right guys, so uh, yeah, Diane's is bigger. <laughs> she always catches more fish and bigger fish than me. But these are some damn good size eels. I think this one's about uh, 24 inches, about 22. Let's take them home and cook. cilantro on top here chopped up uh, cherry tomatoes from that garden right there we got the eel fillet in here some capsicum or uh, green bell pepper over a bed of basmati rice this is our eel tikka masala here we go mm. Mm. Here Good? It's like seafood y too. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I thought the eel would work well with the chicken tikka masala style is when you know when it's fresh, it's kind of mushy when you're trying to fillet it, but as soon as you cook it, it firms up. It's really, really firm. And I thought, you know, fish like halibut or like this might work well in, in this kind of spice mix. And, keep its texture, which I think it does. Yeah. Chewy, kind of like chicken. Mm -hmm. But better. Yeah, not dry like chicken breast, right? So I spent um, three months in northern India when I was like 20 years old, 21, and uh, had a great time, learned a lot, got to see a lot of cool stuff. But I'd say one of the main things I learned was how to use some Indian spices and cook some Indian meals. So if you're digging this, let us know because we've got a whole list of Indian recipes that we would like to share with you with uh, different fish and wild game. Have you gotten any bones? Me neither. I was going to go through and remove all the pin bones using these massive tweezers my mom got me like two years ago for Christmas. But we just moved and I couldn't find them, so I just threw the fillet in there, figured we'd just pull them out as we go. I haven't had a sing single bone. I haven't either, but I know where those tweezers are. I should probably talk to the lady, huh? <laughs> Ask you before I just proceed. Success. Mm -hmm. 
Also, there is cashew butter in here. So we pureed cashew, added a little water, pureed it until it turned into a butter. I'm just saying, if you're gonna serve this to your friends and family, make sure you ask first because we got a really good friend who's so deathly allergic to cashew. If she looked at this, she'd probably need an EpiPen in the thigh, so just ask ahead of time. It's really good though. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know what you'd like to see us do in the future. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. <laughs> Here's your outtakes. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Ah, proud but disgusted. <laughs> Hold it up so I can see it next to your face. I don't higher. want it next to my face. <laughs> These are huge eels. There's Diane's torso for scale. <laughs> Just found this piece of bull kelp washed up. Don't see much of that these days. But here's something that my dad used to do when we were kids. It always made me laugh. Step one, find yourself a piece of bull kelp that's washed up on the shore. Don't cut any that's still growing. You need it. There's not enough of it around. Step two, lop off a big part of it. Cut it right through the ball here. Step three, make a trumpet. <laughs> Tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs>